people, welcome to the channel. This is the self-proclaimed blue dragon. And this week I wanted to do two things. First off in the background, I am working on updating my cast page. So Karen Blue, who is the character I'm working on in the background, has been introduced in Dark Horse back in chapter four, act four, I should say. And I've already talked about her in a biography video, I think last year. If you're on YouTube, if you're viewing this on YouTube, you can watch that video via the iCard in the upper right hand corner. So I'm not gonna go into detail about her since I've already done a biography video for her, but I am drawing her in the background. And the second thing that I'm doing in this week's video is talking a bit about networking. Last month in January, I would gotten a question that kind of inspired me to make this video because I could go into more depth discussing networking. I think it's kind of an important thing to do, especially if you want to be a part of a community, be it, you know, something that you work on or if it's your hobby or whatever. It's still really fun and I think important to human beings to be able to connect and network and, um, work with one another basically so I'm going to talk obviously about my experience here what works for me might not necessarily work for another person so please take this with a grain of salt and that this is my own personal experience that I am sharing and these are things that have worked for me um, your mileage may vary it just all depends everybody's personality is different everybody's goals are different uh, and what they want to achieve with networking. Uh, some people want to network for business means, others want to network for like finding a community, or, you know, it is possible to want to do both or more than just that. So that's just kind of something that I want to mention at the beginning of this video. The other thing that I want to kind of preface this video with is that networking takes time. While I can make a video and give people tips on, you know, how to get involved and get to know people and get opportunities to share their work. Even with all these tips, you know, I, even myself included, when I learn something new, I want to immediately run out there and apply what I've learned. But it doesn't necessarily mean that just because you are applying these tips that you're going to be reaping the benefits of them immediately. Things take time. People are, you know, we're talking about dealing with human beings here and it takes time for people to build connections and meaningful relationships with one another. Uh, relationships, not, not in the sense of like dating relationships, obviously most of you are probably, you know, probably realize what I'm talking about, but I mean relationships as in like, you know, bonding with other people within the community. So I just want to kind of preface this whole video with that as well, that these are tips, but it has taken me personally years to build some of these connections. And it's, it's also an ongoing thing where it's like a garden, you know, a community garden where you have to like foster the growth of something. You can't just one and done. Oh, I met this person. I'm done. You really have to, you know, be willing to be open and work with people. I'm going to have some other caveats in here too, as we go along, because there's a bit of nuance with some of the stuff I'm going to talk about. And I, I can tell you things that have worked for me, but in a lot of cases, you really have to know yourself and you really have to know your own boundaries and such. And I'll, I'll get into that more whenever I actually get into the video. So please, again, take this with a grain of salt. I'm just sharing some of the things that I have done to be active and grow some of my connections with the art community, which led to networking opportunities for me to kind of share my work as well as support other people's work. There's give and take with this. And I think it's important to go into, I mean, just from a personal standpoint, I know, you know, I can't tell anyone else how or how they should feel or how they should go into things. But I personally go into this not with that attitude of quid pro quo, but an attitude of how can I pay it forward? 
and you know how can I uplift other people while also getting word out for myself so it's really a give and take that I am talking about and that's the attitude with which I enter into different things uh, activities and networking and things of that nature and I hope all of that makes sense I'm going to be talking about two different kind of types of networking I'm going to be talking about, first and foremost, online networking, and secondly, networking in reality, which I haven't really had an opportunity to do too much of that lately, and because there is an ongoing pandemic, I'm kind of saving that for the latter part of the video because I haven't had as many opportunities and I've been far too cautious to jump into a lot of events and things. But I will be talking about both aspects because hopefully eventually things will normalize and that will be applicable for anyone who's like me and values um, not only interacting with people online, but also interacting with people in the real world. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to first off talk about being active on forums or you can replace forums with Discord or chat rooms or what, whatever whatever you use to communicate with people. Basically, I'm saying being active where the community of your choice is. There's forums on Comic Theory that I'm pretty active in. There's Tapas forums that I am less active in, but, you know, I go over there and try to interact with different threads or give advice or answer questions or participate in uh, different kind of polls and things. All this type of activity, giving your thoughts, answering people's questions, um, trying to be helpful within the community. It's a great way to meet other people who share similar interests and have similar goals. And as a result, you can oftentimes be meeting people that have different opportunities for you as well as you can on these forums create opportunities for other people um you know projects things of that nature whatever your end goal is i'm specifically talking about comics obviously web comics but this could be applicable to other hobbies as well and other types of art as well so I could go into a lot of detail with that, but I think that covers, at least glosses over things. I mean, you could do things in like, you know, playing games in community threads, or you could get more to the nitty gritty of holding conversations and discussions and sharing like your opinion on different topics within the community that come up on the threads, or you can start your own thread, just, you know, you gotta follow whatever the community guidelines are. And I would suggest you know, keeping an open mind. This advice is something that works for me, but not everybody is going to want to do this. While I am certainly happy to share my personal opinions on things, I do try to avoid melodrama as much as I can. This doesn't mean that I hide my opinions or politics. I think most people kind of get an idea what my politics are. However, as important as it is to have those discussions, if you're specifically within a thread that has a specific subject that isn't necessarily tied into something controversial, I personally don't like to stir up shit and drama just because at, at the end of the, the day, the thread oftentimes gets so heated that it will close <laughs> and then, then there will be no more discussion on that topic and so you can't really, you know, that... that line of discussion is closed but my suggestion here is if you're talking about something like i don't know um composition and then you try to bring politics into composition i think that's a little bit off topic so i guess that would be kind of a piss poor example of what i'm talking about but that's kind of what i mean i personally like people on the forum i've had discussions with people kind of know what my politics are over on comic theory probably if they've been around but where it's not appropriate i don't do that because there are other aspects to one's life besides something of that nature besides controversy controversy has a place um and it's not in every single place <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess if that makes sense. Now, again, a nuance here. This doesn't mean you should hide who you are or what your opinions are. I'm just saying we can we can have a conversation on this without having to get, you know, off topic and into heated debates. So another way, another really good way to network, and this is probably how I built a lot of my, uh, I guess, interpersonal relations. Is that the right terminology? Sometimes I use terms and I don't know that I'm using them right, which is probably not a good idea to do. <laughs> but a lot of ways that I have built... Um, kind of, I, I'm going to, for lack of a better term, I'm going to say professional relationships because we aren't, you know, we don't, I don't really hang out with a lot of people that I've met online aside from one person I've met for, I've had lunch with a couple times um, before the pandemic, but community projects, participating in community projects and being active with that was a great way for me to start to get to know the regulars in the community. And I'm specifically talking about Comic Fury, but also over on Tapas, I've met quite a few really cool people from participating in different things. Uh, one time on Tapas, I was part of a jury panel for some veteran comics thing that was being hosted by one of the community members there. A lot of the people who were on the committee, I still chit chat with and talk to and I read their comics. So for me, just participating in that community event made some really cool like friendships, in my opinion, online friendships, I would consider it. Oh, or if I'm going to talk a little bit about Comic Fury, participating in the crossover exchanges, you know, you get to know the usual suspects, but you also get like some fresh, fresh blood in there every now and then and you get to, that's a really weird way of putting it, but I mean, fresh participants in there and you get introduced to some really cool comics sometimes. And from there, you know, if, if it's something that you end up liking, then you can subscribe and, you know, start commenting on their comics and, you know, maybe form a relationship in that manner. And by relationship, again, I'm talking about like kind of like a professional relationship or a hobbyist relationship. You know, things like Comic Fury Zine, I have met several people online met, not like in person met, but working with other comic artists, indie comic artists, and getting their opinions and hearing their points of view, or like getting, you know, not just people who are on the team, but also people who are participating in the zine itself with like submitting pages or characters or comments or whatever. It's been a way for me to meet quite a few people, and I have really enjoyed those connections. Now, we don't like talk on a regular basis all the time, but there's quite a few people that just through that community project alone, I've kind of had some kind of working relationship with, or like if we have questions for each other, you know, we'll hit each other up and ask questions. Getting involved with community projects, asking where you can help or if you can help, it engenders a positive reputation upon, you know, yourself on your handle when you're willing to chip in and help out where people need it. And in this way, you kind of form these meaningful bonds where like if there's going to be a, if you're helpful in one project, you know, people might want to get together later and do another project. And in this way, you're making those connections. You are networking. You're creating projects and things for others to enjoy. And in my opinion, that right there is the essence of networking. It's, it's not the idea of quid pro quo, you know, I, you know, tit for tat, I do this for you, you do this for me. It's more, we're doing this for each other and ourselves. It's, this is a nuance that I think is sometimes something that you got to kind of grow a lot to understand. It's uh, to me, I feel like there's just it's kind of a different viewpoint where you're not like going into it expecting something from someone else because you're doing something for them. You're more so doing something that's going to help both of you. And to me personally, though, those are the kind of relationships that I kind of like to build. I don't like people to feel like they're beholden to me. And likewise, I don't like to feel beholden to anyone else. So I feel like there's a difference between the concept of 
quid pro quo versus doing projects, helping each other and uplifting each other. And I know that 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 seems like just kind of a minuscule difference. Like it, it's kind of has the end game, but I feel like it's the it just coming at it with a different attitude for me personally engenders a different feeling, which feels like a more positive attitude, at least the way I the way I see it. Maybe it doesn't matter at all, but I'm just again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm just kind of talking about my own personal experience and how I personally view things and go about this. So I hope that makes sense. Another way to get networking opportunities is to participate in contests. I always have to have this caveat, but the way I view contests is not to participate in the contest just to win. I mean, sure, it's cool, it's lofty to have the goal of winning, but participating in and of itself can sometimes be a way for you to get some exposure and meet people not only who are participating in the contest but who are hosting the contest you know if somebody's hosting a contest they want people to get involved right and if you're willing to throw your hat in regardless of whether or not you win and be a good sport about it I think that leaves a good impression upon others on the fact that you're kind of a team player and it's not all about you. Yeah, you want to put your best in and you want to try to win the contest, but you're there trying to help the thing succeed also. But also in this way, a lot of times when it comes to contests, your artwork or your comic or whatever is exposed to other people. Like the contest that we had where I was a juror on, I was one of the, the jury members on it at Tapas that I was talking about earlier. I was personally introduced to so many new comics that I ended up subscribing to and I keep up with. So that's what I'm talking about, kind of like an ex exposure. Well, there were only like three winners. There was first place, second place, third place, right? But everyone could have been a winner because some of us keep reading those comics. So it's just kind of the idea, like I myself participated in that. I couldn't judge myself obviously, and I couldn't influence the other judges and I did not win, but I got a lot of readers from that committee specifically because they were introduced to my comic because I participated in the contest. And now obviously that, that might be different. It all depends on how things are organized and hosted and you know, whatnot. But sometimes there are contests that are polls, you know, Comic Fairy Zine, we do that with the cover contest. And then there's other ways of doing it. You know, they have like juries and whatnot. I think DeviantArt has contests quite a bit. So when I, we're talking about networking, even if you don't win the contest or whatever it is you're applying for, sometimes you can get some new eyes on your work and meet people that way. And that can be a way of networking. Plus you're helping you like the contest succeed. If it's something where there's not a lot of participants, it, it makes it look a little bit better if there's extra people at least participating. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Like, the next thing I wanna discuss are collectives. Oh my God, collectives are amazing. Or web rings. Oh my God, web rings are still around. There's still a handful of web rings around, folks. Those of you who remember the GeoCity days. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so collectives are a fantastic way to network. Sometimes it's good to like start something. When I was at UIS um, as a student, there was no vegetarian club. And so a group of us got together and we started our own club and it just grew from there and was very successful the whole time we were there. And of course we invited people with other like dietary um, restrictions and stuff to join in also. Everyone was welcome. But if there isn't already a collective that exists, you can always start a collective. And a lot of that can be started after meeting people with similar interests on forums or group pages or uh, Reddit or Discord or whatever it is, you meet enough people who have like a similar goal. If the collective doesn't already exist or if there's one that maybe you can't get into because of this, that, or the other, you can always, not in a competitive manner, but you know, in, a, in the spirit of doing it yourself, 
you could create your own collective and have events and things. Me personally, I haven't got time to do that, but there are plenty of people who do. Um, and I am personally part of one collective right now, the Aradia Magical Girl Collective, which I've talked about several times on this channel, especially with like the fashion book, uh, which I was working on back in December, I think. But uh, yeah, collectives are really cool because I mean, the whole idea behind it, the word collect, it's networking, essentially. So with Aradia, the people who are in charge of our collective, they, you know, find opportunities for us to participate in different projects. The end goal is to promote the whole collective, right? So last year we were part of the uh, web comics library convention, which was held online. And we had been invited to talk about Magical Girls. So the people, you know, in charge, got volunteers to discuss you know our own web comics but also to talk about the genre in general including the history and just kind of give people an idea of you know where it all came from and what it's what it's about and what kind of web comics we have to offer so you know collectives are great because there's different events and things this fashion zine that's being created uh, that was all organized through members of the collective you know, I participated, but there are other people in the background who, like, spearheaded the event, spearheaded the project, I should say, and organized it, gave us the guidelines, gave us the measurements, and we're going to be promoting that and, you know, doing that both on social media and elsewhere. So, collectives are a great way to network because it gives you the opportunity to work collectively with others who share an interest with you and help promote not only yourself, but the others within the group. So you can tell I'm very big on this whole community thing. I, I think it's very important for us to support and help each other out because really humans are social creatures when it comes right down to it. And so I really like groups of people that are about supporting one another. It's not just about yourself, it's about the whole while also caring about the individuals, if, if that makes sense. Like, all for one and one for all. I really love Full Metal Alchemist also. <laughs> I know I know that's not from Full Metal Alchemist, that's from The Three Musketeers. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I was just thinking, you know, the whole part where Ed and Al were trying to figure out that, that whole thing. Anyway, <laughs> sidetracking much. I feel like there was something else I wanted to touch upon or with the online networking. I can't remember, there's one other thing I wanted to say, but if any of you in the audience have any suggestions or anything that you'd like to add on to the list of online networking that I just kind of went through, feel welcome to leave those down in the comments because I, I think sharing the sharing of knowledge and helping each other out within the independent community is really what helps keep us going and, and attempting to uplift others. With that said, I'm going to move on to networking in real life. It's been a while since I've had an opportunity to do a lot of networking in person, but I'm just going to kind of fall back on my past experience and I'm going to talk a little bit about college again, but I'm also going to talk about some other things because that's not always, if you're not in college, these aren't necessarily applicable for you know what I mean? I think one good way of getting involved and trying to network in person is participating in events. Kind of hearkening back to what I was talking about, offering your help with community projects online. The same can be true of in-person events. Last year, I was in a summer market and a winter market locally. They were outdoor events. And one of them had a call for volunteers to help with like the setup and to help other people set things up and things like that. So that's kind of a great way to start getting involved because you're offering your help to the success of not only like the event, but everyone participating in the event. 
So volunteering for events or even like, you know, paying to be part of the event or spreading the word of the event through either social media or, you know, posting signs or whatnot. And that actually could be true of online networking also. I, I kind of neglected, that's what I was gonna say. I neglected to mention social media. I personally have been kind of pulling out of Twitter for a while just because my life has been way too busy and I've been too preoccupied with what's going on over there. And it's nothing personal with like anyone who I follow over there who follows me. But having said that, promoting in-person and online events, really important for helping to network. Classes, taking either classes like um, through a college or finding classes at local studios. Obviously, I'm specifically talking about art-related things here, but you could apply it to whatever hobby or independent professional thing you do. But classes are a great way to meet people in the community you want to be a part of and that you want to network in. One of my best friends that is still a good friend of mine, just a personally, personally a good friend, I met in an art class and I'm so glad I did because I have gotten to know her family. I was friends with her grandmother before her grandmother passed. All of this wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't met her in one of my classes. So I think that that's a good way to meet people. Going to events at, let's say, uh, comic book stores or Maybe they're held at libraries or different kind of like just community clubs that aren't necessarily college related. If they're obviously college related, it's real easy to get involved with clubs. I think that's a great way to network. But if you're not in college, there are still like people that like get together and meet and have like book of the month clubs things that are outside of like the scholarly realm people are still doing that at least they were before the pandemic so maybe that kind of thing will pick up again once things settle down but that's a great way like finding groups of people who want to meet in person either over lunch or over dinner at a public place can i just say a public place is really important because there are unfortunately sometimes a lot of crazies out there so please exercise caution <laughs> when meeting anyone in person that's why i like the idea of doing things in groups at public places because i, I feel like there's less of a hazard there than if you're just meeting someone totally blindly that you've never met before in like a dark alley don't do that don't do that okay? i would advise against that just for your own safety. But yeah, like group clubs and things like that, you can find those probably online. The local studio that I tried to participate in different things, we were having a um, business meeting club so that we could learn to grow our business locally. And those would meet in person. We kept spaced out and everything. But those are ways to kind of meet people who share similar interests and similar goals and help each other out help lift each other up and network in that way. So those are just a couple ideas. There's probably definitely a lot. There's definitely, definitely maybe. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's definitely other ways to network in person. I didn't really mention LinkedIn, but something like LinkedIn could also be a way to network. I've had people kind of swing by my page. I keep it up to date. But the type of work that I do, people aren't really interested in for the most part. But that is a good thing to kind of keep up on a professional level if you are trying to network professionally with your art. That's another way you can do it. But yeah, I think that's about all I have to say on the subject of networking. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more you can do. But essentially, the bottom line is putting yourself out there to be helpful to other people, but also to help yourself. And that's where the nuance comes in. Because again, we can look at it not so much as the quid pro quo, I do something for you, you do it for me, but more so from a point of view, I am freely offering this to you to help you out. And if you feel comfortable, freely offer whatever to me and maybe we can network and work together to uplift one another to uplift the community 
So that's kind of like the idea. There's there's a difference between the expecting something because you've given something versus hoping that someone will give in return. One thing I do want to say before I finish this video, and again, this is what I was talking about at the very beginning where you really have to know yourself. One word of caution that I will kind of impart upon anyone out there regarding the advice that I just gave about trying to be helpful and putting yourself out there. One thing just to keep in mind is if at any time you feel something is entirely one-sided, you have alarms going off in your head that you are giving too much and getting absolutely nothing in return, and you yourself are feeling drained or worn out or getting stressed out from participating, but maybe feeling like you're not appreciated, trust yourself, trust your own feelings. If you feel you're investing way too much of your own personal time into something, then you're the only one who can stop doing that. Because other people might not even be aware that they're asking too much of you. I know I'm an heir. <laughs> I expect people to kind of be, you know, old enough and mature enough to know themselves. I sometimes forget that people on the other side of the screen are, you know, it's hard to tell how old someone is, right? So you could maybe wait for someone to notice something all day, but because of how communication is online, the other party might not even realize that you're expecting them to do something. So just be aware of your own personal sanity and well-being and your health. If at any time you're in a community project and taking these suggestions that I, I gave, that I just gave in this video, and it becomes too overwhelming for you, you can politely duck out. You can do that without, you know, being... I mean, people will understand that life happens, right? Because like with the Comic Fury Zine, we've had people come and go, and I'm still on good terms with those people. I understand that like, you know, life is important, and this is something that with any project like this, when there's not money involved, you're asking for volunteers. If you're volunteering your time, just step out, you know, if, if it's too much for you or it's overwhelming. Or if you're participating in something and you just, you just can't, it's, it's too overwhelming, ask for help or politely duck out of whatever it is. Don't make a habit of taking on too much though, because again, people on the other end don't necessarily know what's going on with you. And I know we all kind of tend to think, we, we do, and myself included, we tend to think that somebody should know. It's expecting somebody who has a completely different worldview and upbringing and different experiences to essentially predict what it is that's in your head. So I guess what I'm saying there is just know yourself. Maybe sometimes people will be taking advantage of you and you need to make sure that you're able to stick up for yourself and leave in the event of you know having that feeling so you just be aware i mean this is where the nuance comes in where you really have to be knowledgeable about your own person and if you're giving too much and you know i always say give people the benefit of the doubt but if you're really feeling that someone's taking advantage of you you have absolutely no obligation to continue working on a specific project or thing because no one wants to be taken advantage of and if that's the idea that you're getting or that's how you feel you don't want you don't want to stress yourself out that way so I'm kind of ending the video with that just because this is very time consuming and you put so much of yourself into it and of course I would also caution against giving too much personal information obviously it's the day of the internet you don't want to dox yourself on anything it's so time consuming though and you can put so much of yourself into it and get wrapped up into things and something that was once fun can easily be spoiled if you don't know your own boundaries or if you think somebody is taking advantage of you and overstepping their boundaries if that makes sense 
So that's why I had all the caveats at the beginning of the video because something like this does take kind of years to foster and grow. It is like a garden in a way, networking and growing those connections and extending it outward to other people. But, you know, as long as people are kind of on the same page and you don't feel like you're being, you know, you're not being alienated or anything away from the group. It's a great way to feel a sense of community and to get opportunities for both yourself and for other members of whatever community you're interested in. So I hope this video was helpful. I know it's probably going to end up being pretty long. I just thought it would be a good video to kind of, it would be a good topic to kind of cover because Particularly, I, I would think that most of the people in my audience that I've seen commenting, I'm going to assume that you're all other independent artists. I know quite a few of you are. So I'm hoping that maybe something in this video, I mean, most of you are probably more successful than me anyway, but just specifically talking about my own experience, maybe it would be something that's helpful to anyone out there who's trying to get in a community and trying to interact and trying to get opportunities, but also become part of that community. I hope that something in here was of value to you. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's all I have to say about this. We'll finish up the video and I will be back next week with another video. Peace and love. Fare you well and keep on trucking.